In the previous video, we created a MySQL RDS database from the AWS Council. However, that's pretty tedious, and we're going to do the same process, except this time we're going to use Terraform. So the first thing, I'm assuming you have Visual, Visual Code Studio Code installed on your system. Now we're going to have to do a couple of things. You want to launch the, the Visual Studio, and we have to make sure you've got your connections. So go to Extensions here. You're going to click on AWS Toolkit, and that should be enough to get you going. I've already got it installed, but you can you would hit the install button, and this would create your AWS console. So once that's done, what we really need to do here is create a new folder for our project. We're going to go up to Desktop, Terraform Projects, and I would just create a new one here new folder and we'll call this one here what should we call it um, we'll call it um we'll say rds database and that should be enough here and we've created this now we can close this out and the first thing we will do here is to, in the code is we're going to actually open this so you can go to open folder and we'll collect, select it here, and we should open it. And that should get the ball rolling here on getting our project started. In the next step, we actually have to create a file. This is going to be a bare minimum demonstration to just get this going. I might do a, another video later on to show you how to do this in a better way. But the point here is just to show you how to get this database created with minimal effort. So the first thing we're going to do is click in the RDS state here, and there shouldn't be anything in here. So lots of file, and we're going to create a new file. And I will call this main.tf and create file. So that being said, this is the general in main.tf is a Terraform file, which is pretty generic here. And the first thing we need to do is we need to, for us to be able to connect, we're going to need the access and the secret key. And this is something we'll have to go back to AWS to get. My environment's already set up, so this is already set. But you can put it in your file. This is not best practices, but for the demo, we will do that. So let's go out back to AWS, and we need to actually get an access and a secret key of one of our users so we can do this. We have to go back to the AWS console, and hopefully it's still opened up. And I'm going to go up to services in the upper left hand corner here. And when you click on services, I'll click on all services. And this menu will come up. Now, if you notice here on the top right hand corner, it says security, identity, and compliance. We're going to go through IAM. And we have to create a new user. So I click on this. I'm going to skip a step there because I don't want you to see all of my um, information on my account, but the IAM accounts will, will pop up and then you just click on users on the left hand side and you should get this screen here. And you can see all of my users here. And I've already created VS Code is the one I've been using for my Terraform for, for a long, long time. But I will go ahead and add a new user just for an example here. So add a user. And we'll call it, how about VS Code 2 for a test. Yes, whoops, sorry. VS Code, and we'll call this, I've already created, so it's giving me a warning, too. And this is really important here. We wanted this to be the access keys because we need that private key. And so we can put that in the secret key, so we can put that into our Terraform file. Next is permissions. Um, I'm going to head and attach an existing policy here. And I'm going to use the administrative access to, for simplicity. I figure if this account, I use admin privileges because I do a lot. If you're using Terraform, you're going to be doing a lot with your system. So I have no problem with admin access for that person. But if you are in a uh, business environment, you're going to want to really fine tune these permissions. 
So next we're just going to go to tags. I'm going to just, I don't need a new tag. I'm going to hit review. And it's looking good. This is VS Code 2. Create the users. Now this is really, you're going to see this one time. If you're never new to um, AWS, you see this one time and that's it. So you should really download this file. You can store it somewhere. I'll, I'll download it secretively. But we're going to need to, these are the two keys we're going to have to put back into our Terraform file so we can connect. So that being said, I'm going to remove this uh, user. This is just for a test, but I will keep this and we will go ahead to the next step. We're back to our Terraform file here. And just a little bit of background here. Um, this is standard stuff um, for Terraform files. You've got your provider, and in this case, it's AWS. You've got other ones, Azure and Google. But for this discussion, we're just going to do AWS. It will be simple. And here is your region, which you can get from whatever region you're using, like your AWS account. I'm using the standard East Coast one in Virginia. Now, we're going to have to add the access keys here. And remember, we generated those before. I copied these over and pasted them. So you have to put these in here. Then there's a way, once you get the hang of this, we can put this in the environments. You'll never have to see these files. But this would allow us here to actually connect to AWS, and we'll do a quick test in a second here. Next step that we need to do is to open up a terminal. Now, if you notice way on top, there is a button that says Terminal. You scroll down and click New Terminal. And this will open up, and this is in the project directory RDS database that we created earlier. And this is how we can run some basic Terraform commands and get things going. So we have our terminal window open. There's a very basic Terraform commands we're going to run here. The first thing that we're going to have to do is init. This is generally what you always do when you have a new project. So Terraform. Init. And this initializes, you only have to do this once. This should initialize everything here. Plugins, and it's looking for all of your AWS stuff, depending on really what project that you're going to be doing, if it's going to be Azure or if it's going to be whatever. But this is what we get here from has been successfully initialized. So that's good. Lots of green going on here. So we are now ready to start doing some Terraform stuff in our new development account. Okay, I wanted to clarify one thing. You only have to run Terraform init in the working directory once. So we created this directory um, RDS database, and every time you have a work project, you just run that from that directory to init it. Okay, now what we're gonna do here is I wanted to show what a resource is. And how this works is AWDBNS instance is just something you want to create. And it is what it is. It, there's lots of resources in AWS S3, uh, EC2s, but to get into the nomenclature, the first one's always what the providers, which is AWS, and then you have what the DB instance is. So the more you do of these, the more you'll, you'll get the hang of it, but it is what it is. It's pretty straightforward. Now, I'm going to copy in all of the options here. So you have to torture me typing all this stuff out. But you can see these. This is readily available on Google, or you can or just go to some of the Terraform web pages and they'll show you some of this documentation. But it's basically all of the values that you can do. And when we were doing it with the previous video, we were just using the, the console, but it's much easier to have it in a script form. So let's just go through here. I, I made the database 2023. The last one was 2022. Storage is still 20 like it was with the other video. GP2, MySQL, um, 8.0 is the version. DB.T3 Micro, that's the free stuff. Metadata will be the name of the instance again. Admin password, and all this stuff is default. Um, you could do more if you wanted to. I just put it in the comments below. You will, when it does run, it will create a lot of default things. And when we actually run this, I'll show you some more steps. But this should be enough to get us going. Um, and I'll show you how to actually run this script so we can produce the database.
Okay, and I just wanted to go back to our AWS console here to make sure that we don't have those databases created yet. So let's go to services. This time I'll hit RDS and it comes up. Now you can see we only have database 2022 from yesterday and an old one I did a long time ago, database dash one. So there's only two here and we don't have a third one yet, but we're going to create a new database called database slash 2023, which would be directly from Terraform and it'll be a lot quicker than going through all of the console. So let's, let's give it a shot. We're going to try to run the script. So the first thing I'm going to do here is do Terraform plan. This is basically Terraform would just tell you what it's going to do before you actually run it. So it's kind of a check, a reality check here. So let's run this here and I'll catch syntax errors also. It's running here, you can run that error, okay. It's gonna create one database DB instance. Okay, it looks good, you can ignore that one error. It looks like we're ready to run this. So after you do the plan, I don't wanna go through all of that. We can go through all the details when we actually run it, you'll see it better. But we're ready to go. Now you have to Terraform apply. Now this is actually going to generate, if assuming I didn't make any errors, this should generate database-2023. Looks like it's thinking here. Enter a value, which is saying, do you want to actually create this? I'm going to say yes. And we're looking good here. It looks like we're actually running the script. It's creating a AWS. DB instance. This is going to take probably about three minutes to run. So I will come back when it's done and we can see how it looks. We're all done running. Um, it took about four minutes. I got a couple of warnings, but besides that, it looks good. Um, we'll have to go verify back in our AWS console that this is actually there. So let's move over there and we'll see how it looks. I just want to go back and see if that got created. Let's go to services here and let's go to RDS. And yes, indeed, it was created. Let's go take a look at it and see, because we're going to need some information to connect to it like we did the last time. All right, let's come down here and see. This is going to be our entry point, which we'll need again. Let me copy and paste this here. So I'll have it when we go back in. Um, public accessible, yes, I was looking good. It gave me the default security groups again, like we did before. Should be wide open. I won't go through that again. Yes, yeah, security groups from before. Here's your database identifier, 2023. It looks good, and I think we should be able to try to connect to it. To the final step here, let's just make sure we can connect to our database. And I'm going to go over here and click on SQL tools here. Let me try to clear this stuff out. I don't need Terraform anymore. Make sure I save this before I did. Let's get out of here. Okay, so now we want to go to, let's create a connection like we did last time. Add new connection. And I believe that we did MySQL. Now connection name, we'll call this, how about uh, database 2000, database 2023. And let's just do server and port again. I pasted this in, so hopefully it's still here again. Okay. Database was what metadata. Metadata and username was admin, and I believe it was just password. I'll have to ask on connect, which is what I usually do. And let's try to connect to this thing. Mm -hmm. Save connection. All right, connect now. What's the password? It's thinking here. Oh, it's connected that quick. Wow. <laughs> okay, we are connected to that database now. And we can go ahead and try to run some SQL commands.